here we go. I am going to read about yet another holiday that help happens around this time of year. It happens on the day after Christmas and it's called Kwanzaa. And as you can see, if you listen to my story about Hanukkah, um, I had a personal connection with Hanukkah because I got to experience that as a kid. I got to see what it was kind of about. I have friends who celebrate Kwanzaa, but I haven't gotten to. So, I mean, if I have any friends who hear this, I would love to learn more, like personally learn more about Kwanzaa. And, you know, I, this book will kind of tell you like, what the candles mean because you can see there's red there's green and there's a black candle in the middle they all mean something different okay super cool i now realize that i really love learning about other cultures not just realizing it but i'm i'm enjoying that i'm learning about other cultures and sharing it with you right I think that's the biggest part I'm realizing is I'm loving getting to share stories with you, getting to share about different cultures and religions and because that is a big thing we need in our world is that understanding, right? So here we go. This is Celebrate Kwanzaa, okay? This is from Scholastic. It's by Carolyn Otto, um, part of the holidays around the world kind of little thing they did. And with candles, community, and the fruits of the harvest is what it says down here. So here we go. Celebrate Kwanzaa. And this is by Carolyn Otto. And she consulted with Keith A. Mays, who is a doctor. Here we go. Candles. We celebrate Kwanzaa from December 26th through January 1st. I didn't realize it was that long. I just knew it starts on the 26th. Each day we join our friends and families to light a special candle. We think about what it means to be part of the black community in America and in the world. We celebrate our ancestry. So it looks like here's a girl that's dancing. It says a young girl leaps into joyous dance in celebration of Kwanzaa at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. And there are, it looks like two individuals playing drums. They have candles, community, and ancestry are important things. This is the Jetter family. And then, you know how with Hanukkah we had, their candle holder was a menorah. It looks like a canara is what the candle holder for Kwanzaa is. So it is celebrating what it means to be part of the black community. Super cool. Kwanzaa was created in 1966 during the black power movement to honor African-American people, our struggles in the United States, our heritage and our culture. The name Kwanzaa means first fruits of the harvest. During Kwanzaa, we gather together to give thanks for the harvest, which brings us good things of the earth. We remember the past and our ancestors who worked the earth, we celebrate hope and promise for the year to come. So, in the Ethiopian highlands, a girl carries a bundle of wheat. So, we're celebrating the harvest. Okay. Which is something a lot of people do. Like, I know some people, when it comes to different Thanksgivings around the world, like, a lot of people are sometimes just celebrating, you know, the harvest of what maybe they grew in their gardens or being, you know. So, Africa is a big continent. It has many countries, many people, and many different languages. The words we use to celebrate Kwanzaa come from the Swahili language. Swahili is spoken mostly in East and Central Africa, but you can hear it in places all over the world. About 35 million people speak Swahili. And if you wanted to greet someone in that language, you would say, Jambo, which is hello. So the Mas a Maasai warrior of the East African country of Kenya. So I'm kind of blocking him, but there he is. So a way to say hello, Jambo. Before the celebration begins, we decorate our homes with the colors and symbols of Kwanzaa. The colors are red, green, and black. We use wall hangings, African cloth, and special artwork. 
We make beautiful things for Kwanzaa. Okay. Just like with Christmas, some people might make wreaths. We decorate our Christmas trees. We, I make ornaments. I, I, I do crafty stuff during the ho my holiday season. And if you've listened to the Hanukkah book, they make cards. They might make little presents to give to one another on the eight nights of, of Hanukkah. So it's kind of cool that making stuff kind of spans through different cultures, right? So in a California classroom, children weave strips of paper to make Mecca mats. Marjorie Terrell displays dolls dressed in lovely African clothes in Plainfield, New Jersey. Okay. So we can buy decorations, but it's more fun to make them ourselves. Creativity is one of the seven principles of Kwanzaa. So we use our imagination. Look at the dresses and like the detail. Huh. So cool. Oh, it looks like a U.S. postage stamp commemorates Kwanzaa. Super cool. <clears throat> In our decorations, we include many important symbols of Kwanzaa. We put a mat called a, a makaka on our tables. We arrange a basket filled with fruits and vegetables on the makaka. I'm so sorry. <laughs> to represent the harvest. Ears of corn are placed on the mat, one for each child in the family. The kimbukicha umoja or the unity cup is placed there too okay most important is the canara the special candle holder and the seven candles it holds one black three red three green okay so in oakland california a boy places a lighted candle in a canara in a canara okay over here it says kiko membe cha um Umojo or umoja, so and a canara. Okay, so a father holds his daughter, who in turn holds the unity cup. It is usually filled with water, something pure from earth. And then this is a woman celebrates Kwanzaa in her home. As Kwanzaa gets closer, we practice drumming and dancing. We buy or make gifts called Zwa Wadi for our friends and families. We help others make gifts too. A parent, an older brother or sister, or a friend might show younger children how to make drums and rattles and rain sticks, colored necklaces, or woven mats. Gifts can be given any time during the week of Kwanzaa, but mostly we wait until the last day. It's not easy to be patient. So then it says here, we can't wait for Kwanzaa. You have a gourd rattle, okay? In Florida, Paige Amore shrieks with laughter when a present is stolen from her, stolen from her by a friend, Gloria Dover. Swapping food and gifts is a traditional game in many parts of Africa. On December, on the 26th of December, we light the first candle of Kwanzaa. It is in the center. It is the center black candle. The black candle stands for the unity of black people. Unity means standing together and helping each other. Over the next six days, we will light six more candles. Three red, three green. One each day. The red candles on the left side represent our past. We remember our ancestors, many of whom were brought to this country as slaves. We think of their struggles and their triumphs. The green candles on the right stand for our hopes and dreams for the future. That's super cool. I did not know that. So that black candle or candle is to for unity in the black community. You have the red is honoring the past, honoring ancestors. And then you have the green, which is those hopes and dreams for the future. Super cool. Each day we laid another candle. We talk about the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Umoja which is unity, striving for togetherness with our families and communities. Um, Kujichagulia, which is self-determination. So you're deciding for ourselves who we are, who we want to be, and what we want to do. Okay? 
Ujima, work and responsibility. So working together to build and strengthen communities. Uja, Ujama, Ujama, cooperation. So building and supporting African American stories and businesses and benefit, benefiting from them together. Nia is purpose. So setting personal goals to make community strong. Kumba is creativity. So you're thinking of ways to make our community and the world a better place. Imani is faith. So believing in ourselves, our communities, and the people around us. So unity, self-determination, work and responsibility, cooperation, purpose, creativity, and faith. Those are the seven principles. They're all super good principles to live by every day too, right? Like deciding who we are and what we want to do and how we want to do it. Okay. We gather to sing, dance, play drums, and celebrate our culture. Sometimes we play games. Grown-ups and children like to play Mancala, a board game that is popular around the world. It is played with pebbles or beads or seeds and can be played almost everywhere. One of my favorite board games to play. I have my own Mancala board. I didn't realize it was a big part of Kwanzaa, so it's super cool to find out. I learned how to play it as a kid, and now I'll just play it, and it's a super easy game. Highly recommend if you haven't tried it. Super fun. Okay. We gather together. During Kwanzaa, we eat special foods. Some families use recipes passed from one generation to the next. We might have a peanut soup or shrimp gumbo. Sometimes we have fried bananas, sweet potato pie, or coconut sweets. All of those sound amazing. Amazing. Sweet potato pie is delicious. So fun, friends, feast. On the sixth day or night of the holiday, we have a great feast called Karamu. We dress in bright clothing to display pattern or to display the patterns and colors of Africa. We have drumming, music, and dance. We sing. We welcome as many people as we can and we eat. So you have drumming, you have dancing. It's a huge just community. Okay, that sense of community. January 1st is the last day of Kwanzaa. It is a quieter time. We have a farewell ceremony for Kwanzaa. We greet the new year. We focus on things we have learned. We give one another gifts. We remember our roots and the traditions of our ancestors. We think of their struggles and we talk of our hopes of the future. So, we remember our roots. It's a huge part of it. And I do remember I had a friend who was explaining it to me. And I do remember him saying that, that it is. It's a big about your roots, celebrating those roots, celebrating what our ancestors went through, or what their ancestors went through, right? We wish for strength. We just wish to be united as one people and to work together to make the world better for those to come. We hope to preserve the good things in our lives and in our worlds. We hope to make the world a better place. So it looks like there are more is more about Kwanzaa, okay? So there are so slavery, most Africans were forced to come to America against their will. They came as slaves. Slaves were bought and sold. They were treated like possessions. Families were broken. People lived their whole lives without hope or of freedom for themselves or their children. Kwanzaa celebrates the need to know about the past and create a more positive future. After the years of slavery, segregation, and the struggle for civil rights and justice, black people in the United States wanted to rediscover their roots and take pride in their African ancestry. Kwanzaa celebrates the black community and the unity and triumph of black people. Okay. So, and just the facts, right? Just this little, I love how this is set up. So I have my table of contents. And I can go to the different pages, right? Like, it looks like there is a sweet potato pie recipe. There are, there's a glossary, okay? So, just the facts, just to kind of wrap it up before I say goodbye for today. So, who celebrates it? African Americans and their families and friends, okay? 
Okay. A holiday to celebrate African American heritage, culture, achievements, and future. It goes from December 26th to January 1st. There's a ritual of lighting a candle each day, remembering the past, celebrating the future, drumming, dancing, making and receiving gifts, and feasting. And then food, it's a feast to celebrate harvest time and includes everything from coconut milk to banana fritters to collard greens and sweet potato dishes. Okay, so to all my friends and anyone watching this and or, you know, my friends that are family who celebrate Kwanzaa, if you do, happy blessed Kwanzaa. Um, super cool to learn about. There are some things, I, I learned something new every day. Like, I knew about, I knew the diff three different colors. I didn't know what they meant, right? So black is like unity for a black community. We're viewing. Red is to remember our, remember the past and the ancestors. Green is to think of those hopes and dreams for the future okay so it's always to just keep looking forward super cool to learn about so with that I hope that anyone who celebrates Kwanzaa has a blessed like a wonderful holiday um again a lot of the time our holidays are wrapped up in that whole community and being a part of each other like part of this with each other and that's it's gonna be difficult but I hope that this year even though it might be a quieter Kwanzaa, it's still, you know, we you still get to celebrate. You still get to be with loved ones um, or celebrate with them virtually, maybe. You know, we, we can get creative in 2020. We're getting good at that. So, but with that, I will see you next time. Thanks for listening.